So you picked up this course because you're wanting to read the Bible. So probably the first and best question you could ask is what? What is the Bible? Well, the Bible is a collection of 66 books that are all telling the same story and they're pointing to the same thing. And that thing is God. In fact, the really important thing to remember when you're reading the Bible is this. The Bible is a book that is for you, but it's not about you. To really understand the Bible, what you have to understand is the central character that runs through all the pages of the Bible is God. And God seen most clearly in the person of Jesus. You know, what's really interesting is I've done it before where I've read the entire Bible really fast through. And when you're doing that, you're reading huge sections of the Bible. And what you start to notice is the figures that can feel like major figures in the Bible, like Moses and David and, and all these major figures, they only pop up for just a few short days or even chapters, it feels like. But the one figure that you see from the very beginning to the very end of the Bible, the central character of the Bible and the reason the Bible was written is so that you can get to know God. In fact, it's really interesting. When you read the Bible and you center the Bible on God and you realize God is a central figure, the Bible actually becomes a bigger blessing in your life. What am I talking about? Well, because when you center the Bible on God, it centers everything in the place it should be. You know, what's really interesting is in John chapter 1, it, it says this. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And so, essentially what that's saying is that God was from the very beginning. And who is that word? Well, that word's Jesus. In fact, it says this in John 1, 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We've seen his glory, glory as of the Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then in verse 18, it says, No one has ever seen God, the only God who's at the Father's side. He has made him known. So, so what is this Bible? Well, this Bible is an opportunity to get to know the God who created all things yourself included. And what it can do is it can essentially reset your life. It can help you understand truths about yourself that you're not going to hear anywhere else. It's going to help you better understand who God is. And in better understanding who God is, you better understand who yourself is. And more than better understanding who yourself is, you understand how God sees you. And the picture that God gives you of how he sees you in this book is powerful. It's like a picture you won't find anywhere else, a picture that can fill you with peace and joy and life. And in fact, that's really the goal of why scripture was written, to fill you with all that. You know, what's really interesting is that gospel I started reading, John, which tells the story of Jesus. At the end of that gospel, the gospel writer says this, and I find it really powerful. John 20, 30 to 31. He says, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. See, the reason the Bible is here is not just so you can get to know God, but so that God can then fill you with the life he has to give. And what John said about his gospel is true about all of scripture. It's a book that's designed to fill you with life. That's why in Psalm 1, when it talks about the counsel of the Lord, it describes in verse 3, you being like a tree planted by streams of water. It says he's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither. And that all he does, he prospers. What, what that's saying is that when you're immersed in the word of God, it's going to become like a life that's welling up within you. That's, that's filling you with things you can't find anywhere else, like the peace and the joy and the hope of God. That's not dependent on how the world is around you, but it's totally dependent on the love and the promises of God, which always come true. Um, in fact, when you read on in scripture, it says a lot of great things about itself. But really, when you're looking at scripture, it's more than a book. It's something that's helping you connect with God. It's literally the word of God to you. Have you ever sat down and said to yourself, man, I would love to hear from God. Well, you know what's amazing is when you open up the Bible and you start reading these words, that's exactly what you're doing. You're hearing from God. God is literally speaking into your life. And that's why this is more than just a book. This is the one book that reads you. In fact, it's really interesting. In Hebrews 4.12, it says this, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing the division of the soul and the spirit of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. This is a book that can actually help you better understand yourself because you're getting to know who God is and you're seeing yourself through God's eyes. So as we dig into this course, what we're going to do is look at how you can do that in a really simple way.
Because what I'm so excited about and the thing that makes me the most passionate about this course is that I know this is something that can change your life. I've been reading it myself for a long time. And what I've learned is this, is that there are things in here that are so simple to grab onto and hold onto that if you're reading it for the first time, you're going to find a lot of blessing in your life. But it's a book that you can read over and over over the course of a lifetime and you can study deeply and never hit the bottom of it. It's so powerful that way. So as we get ready to jump to this next thing, I want to start helping you with some really simple things you can use to get started reading the Bible.